Okay. Thank you so much for speaking with me. This is exciting. We can't talk spoilers, but we can talk some things. Um, my question for you, Toby, you play uh, Damien Cray. What we can say is that you are a high tech billionaire who is, is maybe a villain. You know, some things are going on. It's very mischievous. I was wondering from Damien's perspective, does he view himself as the villain or the hero of the story? Oh, definitely the hero. Definitely the hero. I mean, I, 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 I think what's great about it is that he's, you know, when we first meet him, he's presented as this really super positive, thrusting, successful, glossy uh, person who cares about his workers and, you know, uh, cares about the product and all of this stuff. Um, but then slowly, as the season goes on, there's a mm -hmm. parallel storyline about his childhood that, that, that slowly is revealed and also reveals a much more complex and nuanced version of the character that, that actually this, this successful mask that he has is just a mask and underneath it, there's a very different person right. with different motives. Yeah. Very interesting. I like that. Now for you, Marley, your character has been through it through the, 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 the first season. What is her mental state in season two? Oh, that's thanks for asking that. I haven't, I haven't had that question. Um, I think she's in, um, yeah, end of series one, she's like not in a good place. And um, <laughs> we leave her there. And then series two, when she comes in, I think because she's not, we don't see her for a little bit. So I think she's had a bit of time. And um, when we do see her in series two, um, she's she sort of comes into it when Alex needs her most. And mm -hmm. I think the other person that Kyra is, is that she needs like when she's got her mind set on something and Alex always has like, he's always on a mission. <laughs> so I think it's almost, it's a good thing to make him back better because suddenly she has something to like set her mind to and to figure out and, and um, a focus. And I think, she, yeah, she's not in a great place, but coming back and seeing Alex again, I think really helps her and helps focus her and gives her a new task to focus on. Right. Now, it kind of seemed like the end of season one, it's it sounded like you were lonely and you didn't really you wasn't crying, but it felt like he was on that verge of just losing everything. You lost almost everything. Um, what can you say about the relationship between Alex and your character now? Is it stronger than it was before? Or is there some tension? Yeah, well, uh, Kara doesn't tell Alex that she's lost her parents. I mean, this year's one because I think mm -hmm. she doesn't know how to be open with people. She doesn't know how to. She's not got close relationships in her life, not a lot of friendships. So um, I think she's very lonely. And I think the series two, one of the most, one of my favorite parts of it was um, she. She obviously, I think she opens up slightly more to Alex, but they have this very similar relationship where they're both fairly guarded and they both see that in each other. But actually from Tom, who's this completely different energy and is very open in a lot of ways. I think she she learns quite a lot from Tom. And by the end of series two, I think she's she is in a much better place than when we see her in the end of series one. Right. And for Toby, I was wondering, and in terms of Damien, what would you say would can't talk about motives, but what could you say would inspire him the most? Either there was an incident in his past or what he's going through now for him to take this path in life that we do know that he is a villain. Well, I think it's it's more just to do with um, what happened in his past has shaped him as a man and, and has shaped everything that he's done um, and what he wants to do, everything he wants to achieve. And there's a long game that he has that is that that is driven from the from this one incident that happened. And I and I and I like the idea of people are shaped by their past and they, they, you know, they carry this with them. And I think, I think that, that what I like about that is he's mm -hmm. not some sort of cardboard cutout villain that mm -hmm. actually there is this side to him that, that actually an audience can sympathize with and understand what, what is, what he's, what is driving him. Would you say that it's more of a humanistic approach to him? He he just happens to be cast as a villain, but he's not really. Yeah, yeah I think I think so. I it, I think it is much more humanistic um, portrayal of 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 somebody rather than it. You know, it there being good guys and bad guys. It's just mm -hmm. like we're all we all have good and bad in us. It's just which one is going to dominate. Why is that going to happen? And I think that um, 
you know, with with Damien Cray, you know, there is a definite reason for what why he's doing what he's doing. It doesn't make it right, but you know, there is a reason, and it's understandable by everyone. I like that. Do you feel that there is a way for him to become redeemable, or is he too far gone? Well, that's something you have to. I I can't really say that. It's a great question. But it's a question that I hope everybody asks at some point in the in the show. It's like, is this just a one way street? Is this is this going to end where I think it's going to end? And you know, I, I, you always want an audience to ask that, but you always want an audience with a bad guy. I think a really successful bad guy. I don't know whether this will work out. Is is you always want them to kind of slightly like them and sort of root for them in a weird way. Right. So also for Marley, I was wondering, now that Kara's kind of lost everything, will we see her tackle this season differently than, say, the previous season, especially with her relationships and friendships going forward? Oh, um, yeah, I guess so. Yeah, I think, she, yeah, she, apps, she has nothing to lose now in series two. So I think um, she's is almost... Not reckless, but she was very guarded in series one. She was very much, very logical. Alex was a very spontaneous one. She was the one that was always like, let's think about it, let's talk us through, whereas um, let's have a plan. Whereas series two, I think she's a bit more like, yeah, tell me what I'm going to like, I want to jump right into this danger. I think she's a bit more, because um, she, yeah, she's got less and she also wants to find something out in the same way that Alex was driven by in series one. She now has this for series two. So there is a slightly more, um, kind of reckless and a bit more unguarded and a bit more forceful energy where she's going into situations trying really needing to fight the stakes are higher she needs to know she wants information so um yeah quite a similar she's in a similar place to Alex with um really desperately wanting to find stuff out okay for both of you I was wondering for this season if you could have a tagline what would it be for the for the show for for your character oh <laughs> um uh well i suppose for damien cray it's enjoy my game but don't beat me at it mm. that's so good i'm so mad <laughs> <laughs> well, kyra it consultant <laughs> her, 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 like, that's <laughs> what she does is she helps them with that please don't make that my tagline so someone else can think of a better one Okay. Well, then another question then would be, if you could use just three words to sum up the second season, what would you say? Uh, suspenseful, mm -hmm. exciting, energetic. Oh, I like that. And what for you, Toby? What would you say for your character? Uh, using just three words. Complex, dark, fun. Hmm. I like that as well. Thank you both mm. so much for speaking with me. Thank you. Thank you, Dana. Thank you.